another company that you've been watching as well, though, this week is Amgen, the company beating adjusted EPS, but just shy of topping Wall Street revenue expectations. You recently talked to Amgen CFO, the chief financial officer, Peter Griffith, on the company's results. What were some of the biggest takeaways from the quarter? Yeah, so Amgen, interesting, strong results there for that company. And, and they're sort of been a, a big cancer player, but sort of quiet about it for some time. We're just starting to see a lot of movement from that company and a lot more focus, uh, you know, from there. Uh, there was a bit of mixed, uh, you know, revenue outlook from, or sorry, mixed outlook from that company, especially because they're biosimilar for Humira, Amjavita, uh, that while sales were up, it's not as strong. It wasn't one of the revenue drivers uh, as you might expect. So, so indicating sort of slow uptake. Uh, they also have that one drug that is now uh, under Medicare drug pricing negotiations. A uh, similar story with Pfizer, by the way. They both have uh, a drug that's being looked at. So, uh, you know, a lot of pressure from that as well. And just generally, you know, firming up that portfolio for what could be uh, a, a patent cliffs down the line. So, Strong story there. Uh, I did talk to him also about their uh, their entering into the obesity space. Weight loss drugs, of course, top of mind for a lot of us. And they are working on their products there. So interesting conversation. Listen to what Peter Griffith had to say about all of that. The highlights are strong execution, driving innovation at speed and scale across the enterprise. So first, we close the horizon uh, acquisition, brings to us a great rare disease business which we're excited about. Uh, it shows that we look for the best innovation, whether it's internal, whether it's external. In this case, it was external. And secondly, we continue to rapidly progress uh, our organic pipeline. So we're very excited about that. And we're actually up to three uh, medicines now, potential medicines with breakthrough therapy designations. We added two to that category in the third quarter. But to get to your point on third, our volume growth was up 11% year over year. And we think that's evidence that physicians see a lot of value uh, in prescribing our innovative medicines to patients with serious and grievous illnesses all over the world. So that all led to 5% product sales growth in the third quarter. And underneath that was uh, earnings per share growth of 6% up to $4.96 per share. So uh, we're very excited about that. And that momentum led us to raise our revenue guidance to $28.0 billion to $28.4 billion for 2023. So all in all, strong execution, driving innovation at speed and scale at Amgen in the third quarter to serve patients. Peter, talk to me about Horizon. Now that it's part of the family, what can we expect moving forward for the add to the portfolio and guidance for 2024? Well, we're very excited, Anjali, about Horizon. We're excited about a rare disease business. And we are now together fully with them, the commercial forces working together. Uh, and so we're excited about creating some momentum going forward. So specifically on Horizon, the revenues were up 2% year over year in the quarter. And Tepeza, uh, their main uh, drug to treat thyroid eye disease, was up 2% quarter over quarter. And as we joined together with them on Tepeza in particular. We look forward to bringing uh, what we've got at Amgen and helping increase the breadth and the depth of prescribers uh, for Tepeza, including into more of the general ophthalmologists, the endocrinologists. And we look forward to continuing to plan and roll out the international expansion of Tepeza. There are many patients all over the world with thyroid eye disease, and we think that's a, a key part of what we bring at Amgen uh, to help grow Tepeza going forward. Christexa, their medicine for chronic refractory gout, is, is annualizing now at a billion dollars. And Uplisna, which treats NMOSD, which is an autoimmune disorder affecting the optic nerve and the spinal cord, uh, that grew at 50% quarter over quarter. So we think there's momentum there. And we're just excited to be together with them. And we're excited for the medicines we're going to be able to help get to more patients and to more patients faster in the rare disease business. Absolutely. Definitely a strong space. And you mentioned some of those drugs that were part of the concern uh, for this uh, for this union, but glad it's all working out. Let's talk really quickly about obesity. That's an area that you're getting into and really has some hot competition. Where are we now? Well, despite all the discussions and analyses the past number of months, 
there's really a long ways to go in obesity uh, in understanding it and uh, approaching it. There'll be in any number of treatment modalities and any number of treatments that get developed for it. What I'm delighted to uh, announce is that we've completed enrollment in uh, meritabart cafriglutide, or we call it MARI, formerly AMG-133, uh, for the treatment of obesity uh, in phase two. And we've got over 570 patients in the cohort with and without diabetes. And, and so that's the center of the platform we want to build in obesity. We've got in phase one AMG 786, an oral approach. We've got an, any number of clinical, preclinical assets rather uh, in obesity. So it's still early in that game and a lot will happen. So as we look at our medicines, in, including MARI, uh, we're looking at how much weight comes off. Uh, how fast does it come off? How long does it stay off? Um, what's the dosing regimen? Uh, and of course, in, the most important is safety and tolerability. So as obesity develops, we'll be looking at that. We expect top line data uh, from the uh, phase two trial of MARI uh, towards the end of 2024. And we've designed that phase two trial uh, in a way that creates optionality for us to create a broad uh, phase three trial when we get there, of course, depending on the data. So obesity is very important, public health crisis, uh, and Amgen is going to be a key participant in that, we believe. Definitely some similarities, as you can see from these two companies, both chasing that obesity space, both have uh, those uh, uh, the acquisitions uh, that are, have been of concern and, and really looking at patent cliffs. So uh, Big Pharma really in a big space right now to make some moves. Back to you guys.